So what are some of the cons? Okay, well- Let's go I back think... and forth. You do one and I'll do one. Okay, that's great, that's great. So <laughs> here's the con. Here's a huge con. Think about, uh, and this is my, my general thing I'm gonna start with. People are the product of their environment, right? We are all the products of our environment. That's why you know, you're the people that you deal with. You're the five people you spend the most time with. You've probably heard that saying, right? Mm -hmm. And women are no different, right? And professional women are no different. They are in an environment that is hyper-competitive, that is hyper-aggressive, that has hyper, we'll call it masculine energy, but you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's there and they're having to fight and argue all day. Now, a lot of people in those sort of jobs, you know, even uh, doctors, when you're yelling, when you're commanding, when you're, you know, bossing people around, cops, same issue too. When they come home, here's the problem. They don't know how to turn it off. They've never been taught or even have the skills to turn that off when they come home. They're Should still we talk operating. About this before? Maybe, but I love to bring it up. And I feel like we've talked, I don't know. I feel like maybe I've talked to somebody else about this. Before. Maybe it was behind the I, scenes, but I, 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 I say it over and over yeah. again. They do not know how to turn that off. Yeah. I would, I would completely agree with that. That's one of the downsides that, that, that hyper competitiveness all day. Like, you know, I say, say this to guys all the time. Like you don't want to be out chasing excellence all day long, putting a dent in the universe and coming home to some hyper competitive boss girl, you know, bitch bag that's at you all night because something's not gone her way. Um, you're going to listen to a lot of office stuff and there's nicknames for everybody. And the weirdest nicknames I've ever heard, like ghetto pussy, you know, it's like, really? That's, you know, that's what you call people in a law firm that you don't like, you know, uh, like, oh, like diaper mom, uh, the part time Cat. people yeah, like, like yeah. there's names for everything. Right. Yeah. So, um, I mean like, yeah, you're going to deal with that on a personal level after the work hours, work will come home and you're going to mm -hmm. be listening to a lot of that professional person in your face in the evening. Um, I agree with Andrew. I think they have a very, very hard time turning that off. And guys, generally speaking, that are on a purpose, that are making some, some serious bank, they don't want disagreeable women. They want somebody that, that's that's pleasant. They want to come home to somebody that's pleasant, that's, you know, made a nice meal or, you know, I don't care, wants to massage your back maybe. Oh, I can't believe he said that. Misogynist. Misogynist. God, God forbid you do anything nice for a man. <laughs> but you oh, get God. the idea, right? Okay, so that's. Yeah. So that's certainly one of the other cons. Um, what else we got on the con scale? I, I well, now, like now it's your turn, right? Line. Okay, now it's your turn. You got to, you got to go. And I'll long run. hours. I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. There was, I, I had no idea what was involved with being a lawyer until you date a lawyer. Like my phone would ring at eleven thirty, twelve thirty at night, and I'd be like, "Hey, what are you calling me for? <laughs> uh, I'm just on my dinner. You're having dinner break at like twelve like midnight." Yeah, I, yeah, I got this big deal that I got to close, and I'm not going to finish it till like four a.m. You're going to be there till four a.m. Are you serious? Yeah, and then I got to take a taxi home after taking the subway home and all, all, all the trains and everything, and take a shower, sleep for an hour, and go back and do it all over again. I'm like, are you fucking like? Are you crazy? Like, this is what you do. This is what some professionals have to do. Uh, there's some doc, like usually the junior doctors, they're working on shifts, so they get the crappier shifts because they're the younger ones, so they get the crappier times junior lawyers, the same thing. They're the ones there all night. The partners go home. They go home to their families. You know, they're cool, but it's the junior lawyers that you're dating that are 28, 29, 30, 35, maybe or so that are working crazy hours. And um, sometimes you'll you'll be like, all right, let's get together Friday night. And you're sitting down, maybe you're Netflix and chill, and she's fucking out cold by 7.30, like mm -hmm. sleeping, asleep. Mm -hmm. and, and you're like, what am I going to do with this tonight? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and I'll, I'll 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 double down on that in two ways because I have experience with this. Is that you know, and um, you know, with lawyers, obviously, look, as a lawyer, I know there were days, weeks where I worked 70, 80 hours a week. No joke. I you mean, absolutely. To, yeah. yeah, you have to. You're you're the bottom of the barrel, and the work never stops. As soon as you finish, there's more assignments to be given you. But I'll, I'll use it in a doctor context because I was uh, dealing with a doctor, and you'd think it was it was cool because, like I mentioned in the pros they use their time efficiently. You know, she'd text me and say, hey, come over. And I knew what that meant. We all know what that means when she says, come over directly to my place. We're not going to dinner. We're not doing anything else. And I think some guys are like, oh my God, that's awesome. She, she's telling you to just come over. Here's the problem. She was telling me to do it at 1 p.m. Yeah. Sorry, like 2 p.m., the middle of the afternoon, the middle of the morning, because yeah. she was on weird hours and she would only have an hour or two break or a, middle, a little bit of time. And I've got to squeeze into her schedule to try to come 
and you know do my duty. But when I'm ready to go, when I'm saying, hey, it's the end of the work week, I need to blow off some steam here, baby. She's she's working. She's locked up. I can't see her for days. And what? I've got to wait mm-hmm. and sit on my hands while, while I'm doing that? No way. No way. And as a you know guy who's taking control of his circumstances, I'm not going to let her dictate my schedule in the when I want things, right? Yeah. Um, one of the other downsides too is with professional women is because of the stress and the workload is they do age prematurely. Yes. Um, there's this concept of the wall in the space that we talk about. And, you know, they often say that, you know, women hit the wall around 22, 23. After that, they're on the sexual marketplace decline. And, you know, their attractiveness starts to go down. A lot of people like to debate this. Fine. You guys argue in the corner over there. This is our take on it. Um, so working the long hours, crappy diet, a lot of ordered food, um, less time to work out. They're outsourcing not, the kids, right? Outsourcing the kids because uh, they sure, don't have outsourcing time. Outsourcing the kids, yeah. You know, if they've got kids, if you're dating a divorced chick that's a professional and she's got kids, they're going to be with their mom, the nanny, crazy, you know, stuff like that. But, um, you know, the smart guys that watch me, they're not messing with single moms now anymore. Um, yeah, they're like, you know, the equivalent 35-year-old lawyer is probably not going to be as attractive as the equivalent 35 year old uh chick that doesn't have those kind of working hours and stress you know teachers for example have a lot you know lower hours and they get paid almost as well here it's about 100 grand is what they make yeah and and you can work other jobs i mean like i said i i've had really good experiences with for example uh dating nurses right um Mm -hmm. they have much different hours they seem to be and you know once much more amenable than when i'm looking to professionals right so the nurse versus the doctor the paralegal versus the lawyer there's a huge 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 difference um one thing let me bring up the next one is um they really you have to understand professionals have internalized feminism and every single belief that yeah. you believe about this, the myth of the strong, independent woman that can have it all. They, mm. of any class of women, they are kind of like held up as the icons. So because they're held up, put on a pedestal, people will point to them as saying, look at her, she has it all. They internalize that more than perhaps any other class of uh, women. Yeah, they're like, um, it's almost like a chameleon, right? Because... They internalize feminist indoctrination and, and beliefs, but they don't look the part, mm-hmm. right? You know, for the mm-hmm. most part, you know, especially down in Miami, you're going to find more of the enhanced ladies, mm-hmm. but um, Have yeah, a yeah. So you're not going to, like, it's going to be confusing because you're going to see a f- what looks like a feminine beauty, but embodies, you know, typical toxic feminist narratives a lot of the time right. too. So that's. Yeah, that's an important point too. I've had, I've had literally, I've been on, uh, actually it's crazy during the pandemic. I, I did this just because sometimes I would pull dates just to, you know, for dating practice, even though I know this one's going to be a strikeout, but this was the beginning of the pandemic and she didn't want to meet up. She just wanted to do a Skype date. So I said, screw it. Uh, I'll grab a, you know, grab a scotch here and I'll like, you know, have fun with this, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, this lady got on with me, you know, girl, she was actually younger than me, but you know, she's a, a fellow attorney and was just ramping on the patriarchy and how men are horrible and men's standards. And I'm like, and I just straight up told her, I said, I said, do you think this is the way you should behave for a first date? I mean, I was red pill at this point. So at this mm-hmm. point, I'm just having fun. You know, I said, <laughs> what guy do you think would think you're pleasant and nice to be around or want to be around you at all? What human would want to be around you if all you do on the first date is complain about men? But yeah. that's that's where their heads are at, especially mm-hmm. the ones that, you know, as you're saying, if you've adopted the kind of red pill framework, you know, and you're looking at women getting older, wanting to have kids and getting frustrated that they're not there, that they don't have it all. They're just going to act more and more and more aggressive. 